Okay, so good morning, parents, students, um, and our boarding school representatives. My name is Anne-Marie Abebe, and I'm the student placement manager at Nubia Education. And I'm also going to be uh, the moderator for this event. So we are thrilled to have you all join this virtual information session. And uh, like the newbie executive director, Mrs. Rosa Monobi stated, we are confident that this is going to be a successful and productive event. Um, so we uh, conceived the idea of organizing this session uh, due to the current global health situation. We understand that parents and students have a number of concerns and questions that they would like to be addressed with regards to the contingency methods or measures that are being put in place to ensure quality education and to ensure health, safety and welfare for students in the forthcoming academic year in September. And so we've lined up uh, some of our partner boarding school representatives uh, based in the UK uh, to explain uh, what, ha what changes, you know, um, they've experienced with regards to the pandemic and, um, and their plans basically for September 2020. So without further ado, I will introduce our panelists and they will commence their presentation. We've got uh, Sarah Bowman uh, from Harrogate Ladies College, who's the Director of Admissions. We also have Zach Abdelhamid, who is the Student Recruitment, who's Head of Student Recruitment at Bellabees College. We've got Tom Whitehouse from Queen Ethelberger's Collegiate. We've got Gareth Collier, the Principal at Cardiff Sixth Form College. And we've also got Diana Bannam uh, from Rodine School. Uh, so if we could have the uh, presenter who is handling topic one to commence. Is, is, that, is that me, Anne? Uh, yes, that's talking. you, Tom. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so th thank you very much for that very kind introduction. So I'm just going to talk very briefly a about the school and then a little bit about um, what we're doing in terms of our online offering. Um, and of course... Um, it's going to be quite brief, so if anybody wants to get in touch after this session and, and ask him anything in more detail, please do get in touch. I'm going to try and share my screen now, so hopefully it works. Can everybody see that? Okay. Yes. <laughs> cool. so, uh, we're Queen Ethelberger's Collegiate based in York. Um, we were founded in 1912, so we have over 100 years um, experience in education. Um, as you can see, that's our wonderful campus, which is uh, all on campus. We have four schools on one campus there. Um, that's our, the main old building, Thorpe Underwood Hall. We have a traditional boarding school with a modern approach to education. Obviously, Nubi have worked with us for, for many years now, so they've plen sent plenty of students to us, so they also know us inside out. So, of course, you can ask them any questions about us. This just gives you um, an idea of where we are based in the UK. So you can see we're just outside the wonderful, beautiful city of York in North Yorkshire. And actually it's less than two hours from central London on a train, which is surprising for most people. And this just shows you briefly our campus, 112 acres. We've got room to grow as well. We've got all the sports facilities you, you want, theatre facilities, uh, creative arts, all that kind of thing. And of course, we've got um, state of the art um, accommodations as well. Um, just to talk briefly about our faculty, it's a personalised pathway to, um, to progress to a higher education institution. Um, it's innovative. Um, we have A-levels and B-techs, and students can do a mix of that when they're in year 12. Um, we recognise that students have different learning styles, so we give them some flexibility to create their own curriculums and um, around their own interests and their own ambitions. Um, we obviously have uh, a big team of academic mentors, um, we've got a big careers team that can also help all of our faculty students get onto the next stage in their career. Then we also have another senior school within the same campus called the College. And this is a more traditional academic route where we do GCSEs and A-levels. Um, there's a high level of academic focus. We're expecting our students to be of already a very high level. And we're expecting them to, to be able to face the challenge 
of tough, tough situations. And there's also elements of fast tracking depending on what subjects you're studying and how good you are. Just a quick overview of the results from 1819, 70% A star A in our faculty, and we've got 80% A star A um, in our college. So between the, the two, we're still performing very, very well, um, both in the top 50 in terms of uh, school rankings. So we're very, very proud of our students uh, from last year. Obviously this year, things because of the situation, um, we're gonna see how we get on. Um, a lot of the uh, results are gonna have to be worked out as we go through. I'm sure everybody's more familiar with that than I am. Um, a little briefly, our Oxford entry over the last few years, it's something that's getting better and better each year, as you can see. 42 to 7 getting into Oxbridge this year <clears throat> and we have a number of students last year who went on to top 10 universities and this is just a small selection of some of those so 17 students to King's College in London doing economics law etc etc we send students to LSE as well and of course University College London you can see we had 24 students go on to UCL last year so we're very proud of where our students go once they've studied with us um, three have gone on to study medicine, 10 went on to law last year, and 57 have gone on to business, economics, or management related subjects. So, um, anyone who has an interest in those subjects, we can certainly help you get to your um, preferred destination for university. Um, and very briefly, I'm just going to talk quickly about what we've put in place given uh, uh, in light of COVID-19 and coronavirus. Um, obviously, everything moved online and it all moved pretty swiftly. Um, I know we have some principals um, also at, at this meeting and some more senior people, so they might be able to go into a little bit more detail of exactly what things entail. But certainly from our perspective, um, in terms of e-learning, um, we did get our things together pretty quickly. It's obviously a new approach. It's a modified way of learning. And as I mentioned, it's the first for many, many schools. So what we did was we got things in place and then we created guidebooks for each of our schools. Um, and that, create, that contained messages from our heads of year, messages from departments, and um, also from um, teachers to, to, to outline basically each subject area and what they were gonna continue doing from home for the rest of the year. Um, our younger students are using Padlet and Tapestry um, to access online information and our senior students and teachers are using Microsoft Teams. So Teams has become our main sort of way of contacting our students and, to, and there's many ways in which we, we can engage them through Teams as well which is really really good. Obviously in there one of the first things is, is advice on how to structure your day so it's in, in terms of keeping students getting up, putting school uniform on, getting themselves mentally ready for the day um, and then also setting out um, a sort of period, a sort of lessons like you would at school, having certain periods dedicated to certain subjects and completing certain activities as well. Obviously in the guidebook, we um, talk about um, exactly what, um, where the students can find the information for each subject and they access that on the day. And then they'll have activities that they need to complete by the end of that day. Um, we, we do quizzes, we have videos, um, we do PowerPoint presentations, um, there's access to other material online that we request that the students look at as well. And all that is outlined in each subject area on Microsoft Teams. So, um, that's certainly the big challenge is to get everything up there and, and running electronically. Um, as I mentioned here, we've got question papers, PowerPoint presentations, videos, quizzes, and of course, set activities in line with the current curriculum that they're studying. So obviously there are certain projects or certain bits of the, the subject area they need to complete. And so our teachers are guiding our students through, through Microsoft Teams, making sure that they're completing the work that they need to complete to, to fulfill their school year. Um, we also have plenty of links to online resources, uh, both from our own, our own online systems, but also external websites such as the BBC, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, also our teachers are available on Teams to chat if they're on at certain times. Obviously our students in China, it's a little bit more difficult for them to access our teachers. So we do try and adjust things where we can to make sure that the students are getting what they need, um, but they can also respond via email and chats when they do come online. So um, we're doing what we can. Um, we obviously have uh, pastoral care and feedback as well, which is very important for, for what we're doing right now. It's really good for us to know where we are with our students, but also our parents, and making sure that they are getting what they need out of what we're providing. Um, we have an FAQ section in the guidebook, so if there is an issue, they know where to go to, to resolve that issue. Um, Thrive at QE is our pastoral care um, team, 
and they've moved everything online. So we do online weekly sessions such as cultural awareness, emotional well-being, yoga and things like that. And of course, if students want to talk about something privately with an individual from the school, they can also do that um, through Thrive at QE. And we provide a number of contact details for our current students. Um, feedback has been very important for us as well. So there is a feedback area for our, our parents and students. Um, so um, we've actually taken some of that feedback on board. We were providing quite a lot of work and activities for students and some felt like it was too much and they were a bit overwhelmed. So what we did was we've given them the basic stuff of what they need and then we've created an area where they can take do additional activities and additional projects um, if they want to so that they don't feel so much pressure. But there's that extra work should, should they feel like they require it. Here's just a quick example of uh, Thrive at QE and how to sign up for sessions and things like that and a bit of information you can see there, Meditation Monday, it's at nine o'clock uh, on Monday mornings, we have a meditation session that students are welcome to join. And you can see also we have a strength and fitness program we run for students that have to fill out. So we're making sure that our students not only are healthy in the mind, but also healthy in the body and keep them doing some, some, some uh, physical activities because uh, not all students like to do sports. So we're doing this to try and encourage all our students to, to keep fit as well. Um, so that's it in a, a nutshell from me with regards um, what we're doing. And of course, as I mentioned before, if you have more questions about this, then, then please let me know. But that's it from me. And in terms of uh, talking about our online uh, provision, certainly for the time Thank being. you very much for that informative presentation, Tom. Uh, so we're going to move on to Sarah Bowman of Harrogate Ladies College for her presentation. Hello everyone. Um, so um, as you've heard, my name is Sarah Bowman. I'm the Director of Marketing and Admissions for Harrogate Ladies College. Um, and uh, like, like all of the schools that you'll, that you'll hear from today and all of the schools that you'll talk to when you're looking for a potential school for your child, we're an excellent school. We have uh, outstanding teachers um, and excellent uh, exam results. Um, we're based very near to uh, QE, so the, the map that you saw from Tom, uh, we're, we're very close neighbours of uh, Queen Ethelburgus. Um, as our name suggests, Harrogate Ladies College, we are a girls only school, so if you only have sons, then I do give you permission for the next couple of minutes to stop listening for, for a couple of minutes as I tell you a little bit more um, about our school. Um, we do have um, a very long history at school of welcoming Nigerian and African uh, girls to our school. I was um, on a reunion, a virtual reunion event at the weekend and I was chatting to uh, a lady from Ghana who had been at the school 40 years ago um, had some amazing uh, stories to tell of her, of her experiences there but say so we do have a very long history of welcoming Nigerian pupils to, to the school. Um, one of our recent deputy head girls from Nigeria is now uh, studying at uh, Durham University, she's studying law um, and all of our Nigerian pupils are fantastic um, really well valued members of the school community um, they play um, important roles in, in the overall school, um, leadership roles, um, very active participants in our drama programmes, our sports programmes, our music programmes. Um, and we also have a number of um, uh, pupils um, from Nigeria and across Africa who are now living in the UK who are also part of the school. So we have a fabulous uh, community and in fact overall in our boarding community we have more than 29 different nationalities um, and so it's a fantastic opportunity to make friends not just in the UK but from around the world and that's really something that's quite important to us. We are, as I say, an all-girls school, and I know that all-girls schools um, are uh, not common in, in Nigeria, and when I speak to, uh, to parents, sometimes they tell me that they worry that if they send their daughter to an all-girls school, that their daughter won't be able to speak to boys when when they leave and oh my goodness I, I often just think you should come and meet our girls who are so confident they have the confidence to speak to anyone uh, young old male female they are just brimming with confidence and I think that actually that's something that is really at the heart of our school and, and often people will ask me well what makes 
one school different from another. There are so many amazing schools in the UK to choose from. But I think actually that what's really at the heart of our school is that confidence and empowerment that we focus on, on helping our girls to develop. We have a, a message that, um, that we use in school and we use when we're talking outside of school to other people, um, which is I am me. And I am me is just three uh, quite simple, quite little words, but actually I think that there's something that are, that's really quite powerful. Um, um, and I am me is about having the confidence um, and the freedom to um, be who you are to have the confidence to stand up and say who you are. Um, and, and I think that that's something which, um, for even uh, as adults, that's something that's not really all that easy for, for us to do. But I think it's something that's really incredibly important for uh, young people, for teenagers, and perhaps particularly for, um, for teenage girls, to have that confidence and that freedom to be able to say, I am me. Um, is really something quite important, particularly in today's world where we live our lives through social media and anyone can comment, anyone can judge, um, actually being able to say, I am me and have that confidence to do that is something that's really important. And that's one of the things that's really at the heart of the school ethos um, and at the heart of our school. And it's something that's really, really important to us. Um, and I think it's that empowerment, that confidence that enables our girls to go out into the world as confident young women, um, inspirational young women that will inspire the next generation. And that's really what's at the heart of our school is inspiring the next generation of young women to go out into the world, to be themselves and to take on the world in their own terms. Um, I think also the... Um, having that um, that confidence and that freedom to be yourself is also really important when it comes to the subjects of mental health and well-being. Um, and mental health and well-being is something that's really important to us as a school. Um, but it's also something that I think is incredibly important to us all at the moment in these very unusual times working from home, studying from home. Um, and in September, we'll have boarders who are coming back to a school environment or joining us for the first time in a school environment under slightly different circumstances than they would do normally. Um, and I think mental health and wellbeing is really going to be really incredibly important for all schools um, as we come back in September. Um, lots of the schools that you'll talk to and I think we're all very good at schools at schools at, at focusing and looking after the, the mental health and well-being of, of pupils. Um, at Harrogate Ladies College we um, invested uh, two years ago in a dedicated wellness centre and the wellness centre is something that we're really proud of um, but it's a place which focuses on um, on helping the girls to stay well. It's not a place that you just go when you're ill. It's a place that you go to learn strategies um, to help you to stay well. Um, so we have lots of talks and programs that take place within the wellness center, uh, mindfulness, meditation, we have yoga, we have talks on uh, nutrition, talks on resilience, all sorts of things that can help the girls to build that resilience build that mental strength and well-being. Um, we have a dedicated director of uh, wellness. We have um, wellness um, ambassadors, both in staff and pupils, who are all mentally health uh, trained to help to support one another and also to support pupils. All the way through lockdown, we've had a, um, a wellness uh, program running alongside our academic program, a little bit like the program that, that Tom talked about earlier. Um, and every day, the pupils have an opportunity to join um, a Zoom uh, call with one of our wellness ambassadors so that they can talk about how they're feeling and get the support they need. All of the girls at the moment have uh, weekly wellness tasks um, and they have wellness objectives. So very customized program for all of the pupils and all of the staff as well. I have wellness targets and wellness objectives because it's important for 
us all in, in these very unusual times to, to really focus on, on our own well-being and learn how to support our own well-being. When we come back in September, that wellness program will continue. All of the pupils will have a mentor that they can talk to and that will support them. Uh, the wellness activities and the programs will continue. We'll have an activities program that is designed to support their well-being. Um, it will be a slightly different activities program and uh, and we might normally have the evenings and weekends, but it will be important that we still have activities that will support the girls and enable them to go out in a safe place um, and uh, support their support their overall well-being. We have an induction program uh, that runs every year, but this year we're developing that induction program so that it really just takes into account a little bit more the current circumstances and the added anxieties that we know that those pupils might be feeling at that point in time. Um, and, and I think it is really important, and I'm sure that all of the schools that are on the call today will also be be focusing on what they can do differently and what they can do in addition to support the mental health and well-being of the pupils. We all know that it's going to be a really um, uh, unusual and a different um, experience in some ways for the, for the pupils. But I know that we as a school have laid really solid foundations. We've invested in our wellness programme. We've got people that are trained. We're all very passionate about it. And I think that we're all in a really good position to help to support the well-being and the mental health of the pupils when they return in September. And I hope that that is uh, helpful for, for all of you listening to, to feel reassured that as schools, we all will take the mental health and well-being of your children really seriously. Thank you so much for your presentation, Sarah. So we're going to move on to Diana Bannon from Rodine School. Yes, hello everyone. And uh, thanks Newbie Education and Maria Rose for this opportunity for all of us to um, get together and tell you a little bit about our schools and also the contingency and plans we have for September. Uh, like Tom, I'm going to attempt to share my screen. I've got a presentation that I'm gonna um, whip through fairly quickly. Um, uh, here we go. Can you see that okay? Yes, we can. Okay, is it a full screen? Uh, no, it's full. not full screen. We okay. can see all the slides. <laughs> Let me just get this up. I'm just getting that, uh, my helper to come in. Uh, <laughs> hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, there we go. Is that okay? Full screen? Yes, thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, yeah, like Sarah, I'm going to be flying the flag for Girls at Education. Um, Rodine is in uh, the south of England, so it's the opposite end of the country from Harrogate Ladies and QE. And um, what we believe about Rodine is that it is a genuinely uh, holistic school with an academic heart. Uh, what is at the heart of the school also is, of course, the girls. And this is a picture of our year sevens last year, just beginning out their journey. And this is some of the head girls team from um, last year. So the girls are certainly what we're most proud of. Um, we're proud of the, their thoughtfulness, their optimism, their creati creativ creativity, their kindness, but most of all, they're great fun to be around. So Rodine, as some of you will know, it has an incredible location. We are based uh, in Brighton, which is an exciting city, just an hour south of London, about an hour from Heathrow, and about 45 minutes from Gatwick. Uh, we have the, we sit high on the cliffs over the English Channel, and we have the South Downs um, behind us. Um, what is very, very important, I know, to many overseas family, is the security and the safety of the site uh, and we have 24 hour security. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a good place for overseas families to come to. Um, the houses are perhaps at the heart of the school. Also, we have uh, uh, six houses. Four of the main houses actually look at the sea um, and, the, um, and the other two houses are part of the sixth form village. Uh, these are the houses for the younger girls, as you see, they're, they're named very creatively, house one, two, three, and four. 
um, and they have different colors. Uh, house competitions are an important part of boarding life. We have um, invested in a nine million pound refurbishment of all the boarding houses, and this is one of the main drawing rooms. And as you can see through the window, they do look at the sea. Um, this is a, a, a typical bedroom. This is obviously a double bedroom. We have rooms with three beds for the younger girls um, and uh, single study bedrooms from year 10 upwards. Um, this is uh, certainly one of the, uh, this is what we call um, the general dining room. And this is the girls, this is a room for girls to hang out, have boarding meetings, house meetings. There's a small pantry off there where they can cook pancakes and things and snacks in the evenings. Um, just some more shots of the boarding houses. Um, this is actually in the sixth form boarding house. Um, one of the sixth form boarding houses. Obviously trips are very much a part of boarding life. Um, and this is some of the, the things, this is a, a typical uh, activity trip. This is a trip where the girls can drive go-karts and obviously trips to um, uh, stately homes. Um, Co-curricular is um, a very important part of life at Rodine. We are a holistic rounded school developing the whole person uh, from swing to music to drama to learning to juggle. And yes, we have a school farm uh, which the girls particularly love. That was all part of the headmaster's vision for um, certainly the younger girls, you know, getting the girls off the screens at weekends, getting them out to be with the animals and uh, just, a, just as a, a fun sort of uh, nice secure thing to do to, to learn about looking after animals. Um, and uh, who doesn't like a cuddle with a goat every now and then? Um, we have a 380 seat theatre and um, this was a recent production of Peter Pan, Music Technology Studios. Um, this was a recent performance of the musical Six that we did there. Obviously ballet, more music. Every girl in year seven learns a musical interest, instrument. Uh, the, uh, the last year it was the trumpet. Uh, and that's uh, seen as a foundation for the school orchestra later on. Um, our main sports are, are hockey, netball, and swimming. And in the summer, it's athletics, tennis, and rounders. But we also have coaches for cricket, for football, for rugby. Um, and then obviously there's all the fun side of things, which is, um, oh, anything, Pilates, yoga, trampolining, all sorts of things like this. Um, just some more shots for you. I'm moving fairly quickly through them because they're self-explanatory. Obviously academics, um, the foundation of the school is the academic life, life and we, like, we hope to develop skills, critical thinking, uh, and an independence of mind. Um, just working through these. Um, the results have good, the, the results have improved dramatically over recent years since Oliver Blong took over as headmaster. These are just some of the, uh, the local the local newspaper headlines. Um, just some more stats for you. I'm not going to dwell on these except to say that you can see that um, we have improved dramatically year on year uh, across A levels and GCSEs. But um, a girl's education is something that we are most proud of, like Harrogate Ladies and other very fine girls' schools. Uh, we believe that girls uh, do very, very well in a single-sex girls' school. And uh, this is borne out by um, the, uh, the exceptional growth in numbers, as you can see from 2013-360 to, to, uh, to uh, the current situation, which is 630. So we have almost doubled in size over the last few years. Uh, we've had four excellent inspections, which are only important because uh, it's always good to know what external um, people think about us. And we have been developing the facilities and have um, a new STEM block planned in a couple of years. Um, just some more shots of the farm. Uh, where it doesn't matter wherever I travel to in the world, uh, always the first thing when I'm interviewing students is always, oh, you have a school farm. It, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a thing, it wasn't expensive to do, uh, but it's the thing that the girls really, really love. Cute pictures of lambs. 
And just uh, to finish up, these are some um, pictures of the sixth form boarding house. This is the sixth form village, uh, which is separate from main school. Um, it's obviously, you know, the, the boarding is, um, is, 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 you know, when they're at school, the boarding has to be uh, a place that they feel they belong in. It's a place that they can feel at home. Uh, because school, after all, is, is not just about studying. This is, the, uh, this is a picture of the clubhouse for sports matches where we serve teas. And this is the planned vision for the development of the library into an interactive learning commons, which we have planned for next year. And just to finish up, uh, just some, uh, some quotes that we're proud of. Uh, but the one we're most proud of is this one. So um, that is, um, that concludes the presentation. Goodness knows how I escape from this. Stop sharing. Here we are. Am I back again? Yes, you are. <laughs> and Thank I was just so going much. to tell you very quickly, uh, which is what I was asked to do about um, the plans from an emissions point of view for this September. Um, basically, the key uh, for us is that we provide complete fe flexibility for families, uh, for new families coming in. So we have um, produced a booklet that talks about um, the, the health and hygiene measures, the health care and the facilities, the social distancing measures, all that sort of thing, the travel and the quarantine and the duty of care. But what we've basically told families is, um, you know, uh, we are following very strict guidelines from the UK government. Uh, we can provide quarantine um, arrangements either at school um, for two weeks in August. So we are opening the school two weeks early for families, to, for girls to come and quarantine with us, go to their guardians. Um, we are providing flexibility on arrival dates. So if they are unable um, or don't feel comfortable coming to this country, at the beginning of the term in September, they can access online learning um, until such time as they are able to get here. And our classes will reflect that late start date, uh, which we're just raising at the moment. Um, or they can defer entry to, to uh, January, or of course they can defer entry to September 2021. So what we've tried to do is just provide complete flexibility in a supportive way um, to show families that Rodine is a safe and secure environment and um, their daughters will be safe within our hands. Um, and just to provide the complete flexibility, we're also going to be sending our minibuses to the airports uh, three times a day um, for a week um, so that we can provide transport without the need for um, girls to either take taxis or, or go on public transport. Um, yeah, I think that's really enough for me. So um, hopefully some questions will come later. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Diana. Um, so I should have mentioned this at the start of the session to our parents and students. You are more than welcome to submit any questions that you may have for the panelists. And you can do so by just typing them in the chat box. We have a dedicated team member who would record all your questions. So when the panel discussion does commence, we will surely you know, mention your questions and each of the panelists can address them. So we're going to move on to Zach uh, Abdelhamid from Bella Beast College. Thank you very much, Rose. Um, uh, firstly, I just want to thank everyone from uh, my colleagues at the other, the other schools, uh, their presentation was very uh, informative, even for me, <laughs> and I learned a lot. Um, and I think we share all the, the concerns and how we, we try to look after our students. Um, so again, thank you very much for that. Um, I, would, I would try briefly to, to differentiate the approach of, of talking about pedagogies in particular, because in general, we have in common the, all of us, um, the way how we're going to look after our students, either September or January intake, once the, the, the school uh, will open the on-campus classes. Uh, but very briefly, what I'm going to do, uh, just uh, I'll give uh, some feedback on uh, uh, 
Philippines uh, background. Um, so hopefully you can see my screen now. I'm just I'm trying to figure out. Can you see my screen now, Rose? Yes, well, I can we, see. Yes, you. we can see your home screen. Right, perfect. Okay. That's fair enough. Um, yeah, so a little bit of background of, of, on Villarbees. Um, we are, um, uh, we're not a traditional school in the UK. We are an international college where mainly our students are international. We have like 70 uh, uh, different nationalities from all over the world. Um, we have two campuses, one in Brighton, one in, one in London. Uh, we provide the GCC uh, foundation, A-level, and business undergraduate year one. Um, our students mainly chosen Bellabies uh, because we have uh, an international environment. Uh, uh, it used to be myself uh, an international student, and I know sometimes how difficult for international students to uh, tra the transition from their own country to, to go to UK university sometimes uh, a little bit difficult. So we're trying to uh, bees, provide the environment where the students have that transition very swiftly, being uh, in uh, location with all international students, uh, sharing the same challenges and the same uh, concern. Um, and that um, uh, gives us the opportunity to, to, uh, to provide the help and support the students can gain, especially in the first year. Uh, and uh, progress to the uh, university uh, um, uh, they want and the, uh, the aim uh, degree. Uh, uh, and very briefly, uh, uh, I'm trying to talk today about the transition we try, we provide our students for September and take from uh, a face-to-face -face class uh, to uh, virtually uh, uh, or uh, e-learning. Um, we, we have in September. Um, as everyone knows that it's not a school decision to decide whether the classes will be face-to-face -face or not. We all obliged uh, um, by the UK government first to all relegation, whether we not, at this point, we're not really 100% sure whether September and take will be face-to-face -face or not. Uh, for that particular reason, we, we try to be prepared for both scenarios. And uh, the main objective now, we, we provide our students a clarity and a blended uh, courses. So it's not going to be online study. It's just a temporary solution for the current situation where we say to our students, you don't need to wait until next year. You need to just to, to start as a plan for this September and not to miss out on, on, uh, on time for your, uh, your study plan. Uh, particularly for those students who are keen to study foundation year. We really encourage them to, to join our uh, uh, September intake online uh, once everything, and that's the, that's the main concern for us, that's the main priority as for other schools, I believe. The student safety is, is more important than anything else. Uh, we believe uh, until now there is no um, a clarity uh, in UK that traveling from, from your own country will be easy, will be probably a valuable option. Uh, for that reason, uh, we highly likely gonna be teaching uh, our students just online for September intake. Um, what's the virtual learning for, for students? Um, as probably Tom uh, emphasized that very clearly, I assume we're going to have a very similar approach where students can have online classes using an, an online platform. It might be different from school to another, uh, but all the technology available now uh, is going to be used for us in, in September, where a student can access to their uh, lessons, materials, uh, communicating uh, with their um, uh, uh, students or peers uh, um, and uh, academic staff. Uh, having video classes, uh, uploading their assignments and taking uh, uh, quizzes, uh, all these activities um, uh, will be available for, for our students. What, what we are trying to say to our students who are really concerned about the online study, uh, very simply we say to them, instead of you coming to our class, we bring in the class to you, uh, at least for the first term in September. There are a lot of uh, 
concern about the disadvantage of, of being online study, but in the meantime, uh, there are massive understanding from parents in particular and uh, Asian that th this is just a temporary solution. This is not an ideal scenario for us, but this will help us to cope with the situation and carry on our study plan. So th this definition is, is, is really important to be understanding. And uh, uh, alongside of our um, uh, commitment uh, to our students that we assure students that all the experienced uh, academic staff will be delivered to them. Same, exactly the same teachings, uh, the same models, the same materials will be delivered. Um, some of those materials is really hard to be uh, practically delivered online. For instance, um, uh, some of the uh, workshops, uh, especially for those who are studying um, uh, science related subjects, uh, we do doing our best to provide whatever it takes to, to maintain the student's academic level and support the students to, to learn as much as they can uh, during the first term, at least for, for September intake. Um, the, the advantage uh, for these students is uh, to have the same access to the international community. Students will be allowed to interact with their uh, peers, and with their academic, uh, having the one-to-one -one session with, with, with their academic staff all of these will be uh, still available for our students. Um, also, the support from the welfare team, uh, daily checks, uh, the live classes, um, engaging with the, um, uh, some of the academic staff regarding the study plan uh, beyond the, their current classes as well. Uh, one of, one of the, the main important thing we, we provided to our students to make sure and uh, give them some assurance that all our students who are considering to do the online classes but not 100% sure, we give them some uh, uh, some period to make their mind up if, uh, if that's the, the right uh, things to say. For instance, any students who are joining our online class in September, they will have 21 days to still to decide whether uh, to defer to general intake or even to drop out of the whole study plan with full refund guaranteed for them. I don't think uh, that's an easy commitment to do. I don't think that's the objective, obviously, for, for us, uh, uh, for students to drop out, but this is an assurance that the, the uh, materials will be provided. Uh, the way how we're going to teach you online is uh, almost a guaranteed way for students to be satisfied with, uh, with it and uh, gain as much as possible uh, for the first term intake. If a student say without any uh, uh, justification, if a student say I'm not happy with that, then they are entitled to, uh, uh, to defer to generally as a first option if it's, and uh, students uh, obviously can drop out as well uh, if they're not happy with that. Um, that's very briefly on the online. Uh, I don't want to repeat what, what uh, my colleague said, uh, but um, again, um, it's very good opportunity for students not to miss out on this. Uh, uh, more affordable if a student considering to do the online, at least for the first term. Uh, we all understand that transferring to UK, including accommodation fees and pocket uh, uh, expenses, will be saved if students do the first term online approximately 7,000 to 8,000 pounds student can spend in the first three months if they are physically in UK. Um, that's not uh, a message to encourage students to do the online study. Absolutely not. It's just to try to justify that this is a very good option for the students. This is a, a very good way to start their study plan instead of waiting for next uh, uh, general intake or even cancel the whole plan and stay at home. Um, um, yeah, so this is what I want to say uh, briefly, and uh, I'm more than happy to expand on, on, on Bellarbees and their support uh, for our students uh, in the uh, Q&A sessions. But uh, lastly, I want to just uh, emphasize that uh, even if we are going online, that doesn't mean we don't have the, uh, the guideline for a student basically to be on campus, because we do have current students who are still on campus and they haven't left uh, the school at all. Uh, we follow the UK government um, guideline, uh, including the, the two meters uh, uh, distance, uh, students in consistent way encouraged to, to wash their hands, uh, um, to keep a close community on campus. 
looking after student uh, mental uh, uh, support as well, where uh, considering the student culture and have that culture approach where uh, we, we support the student and contact them uh, on campus and keep them active. That's a very critical point. Uh, um, again, uh, everyone has mentioned a little bit of uh, what kind of activities can do students either online or not. Uh, if a student is still doing just to align, we have plenty of uh, uh, session where a student can engage their time with their peers, uh, for instance, like uh, cooking competition or some quiz uh, uh, sessions as well. Um, and so this is, yeah, uh, an overall brief on, on Belarus, and I'm sure a lot of schools in, in Nigeria and students uh, are aware what Belarus is delivering to international students and particularly Nigerian students. Uh, to achieve the main objective, which is progress to top universities in UK, which is we have every year student progress to top uh, 10 universities in UK, either through A-level uh, mainly, and uh, some of those uh, foundation students as well, where we, we provide nine uh, guaranteed progression uh, uh, to top universities, including uh, Durham University, Lancaster, Birmingham University. And uh, I'm more than happy to take questions afterwards, and I, I hope that uh, you find it uh, uh, at least uh, uh, quite informative, uh, considering the unusual situation we live in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Zach, uh, for your detailed presentation. So we're going to move on to Gareth Collier from Cardiff Sixth Form College. Thank you uh, very much, Anne-Marie, and uh, to, to Rose Amanubi for uh, putting these sessions together for uh, the Nigerian uh, public to be able to hear a little bit about how our schools are coping with the COVID-19 issue and situation in the United Kingdom and how uh, they can be confident that they will be sending their young children into uh, a, a good educational environment uh, in September. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Cardiff Sixth Form College in, in a moment, but I think probably uh, the most important thing to hear uh, about is uh, a reassurance of excellence. Um, you're going to have to forgive me a little bit because I'm a little bit of a fan of, uh, of Martin Luther King. So I'm going to start with uh, a little quote by him, if, if you'll indulge me for a moment. Uh, and Martin Luther King said uh, famously that um, a measure of a man is not where he stands in times of comfort, the way he stands in times of challenge and uncertainty. Um, we're certainly in challenging and uncertain times. And I think that you'll find that each and every one of the independent schools represented here today, and all of the others within the sector as well, are certainly capable and well able of standing up uh, to challenge and uncertainty and coping perfectly well. If we look back, the uh, independent school system within uh, the United Kingdom has been around since the, the mid 1600s. And even some of those schools that were around then are still around today. Uh, very good evidence, I think, that, uh, that we've stood firm in the face of many adversities and many challenges uh, throughout our histories. And COVID-19 will simply uh, be assigned to history at one point in time, and we will have sailed through uh, with aplomb uh, uh, and with integrity. Um, I think important also to mention here that uh, the, uh, a major confidence boost for you as parents really is that the, um, the very being of schools in the United Kingdom is based on the essence of safeguarding. We're here to put at the front of uh, what we do the safe education of our, our children, of your children that you send to us. We look after them, we keep them healthy, we keep them safe and we educate them to be bigger and better than they are when they arrived. Now that's our, that's our reason for being. People go into education because they're interested in making sure that young people grow and become the best versions of themselves that they can be before entering the world of adulthood, if you like, and moving into future careers uh, and uh, hopefully onto to further or higher education or into the workforce. That's our reason. That's what we do. We're here to look after and make sure young people are safe, happy, healthy and educated. And, and that's regardless of whether we're facing a COVID-19 situation or not. And so whatever you're thinking about today, whether you're looking for a school in the future, whether you've currently got your young people in schools in the United Kingdom, uh, whether it's, it's something that is a, a pipe dream for some time long way down the line uh, and you're not sure about it and you're just looking for uh, some ideas, you can rest assured that the British education system and independent education in the United Kingdom is absolutely a fundamentally excellent choice for the ongoing education of your young people. 
You've heard from my colleagues here uh, some excellent links between Nigeria and uh, the United Kingdom uh, and how they educate uh, Nigerians within their, their uh, schools at the moment. Cardiff Six Oncology is no different to that. And, and certainly the sorts of students that come from Nigeria play very strong and powerful roles uh, within, uh, within our colleges. You could see uh, from uh, Diana's presentation or from her prefect body, they're very clearly Nigerians sitting there in, in her prefect body. You've got pictures of Nigerians from, from uh, many of the schools, including Queen Ethelberg is there, which is showing a strong uh, flavor of uh, Nigerian students within uh, what they do very positively. And we are, we are very similar uh, and exactly the same to that. So uh, we've also heard some detail about how uh, schools will manage the transition from uh, airport to school, how we're considering uh, social distancing, how we're ensuring that the moment you discharge your, your children to us and they land in the United Kingdom, we are absolutely focused on the paramount uh, aim of making sure that they are healthy and safe and with us uh, in our schools. Uh, the issue of, of, of buses uh, with social distancing in them, the issue that, that uh, multiple journeys to the airports to try and collect people. And when they arrive with us, you can rest assured in the, the good news message that, that uh, has come out of the British government uh, and the DfE recently, and we don't get many of those, but a good news message is that uh, boarding houses in the United Kingdom are to be treated as single households. Now, what that means for us, in, in essence, is that all of the students once in your boarding house and living in there are in the same family. And therefore, they can be treated as a family and you can get on with a normal uh, way of running your household without having to uh, be overburdened by the excesses of, of social distancing and, and COVID-19. So in essence, the safest place to be once you've left Nigeria and you've arrived in the United Kingdom is in a boarding house. And so to package your, your, your charges off to us, to, to our boarding environment, is probably the best thing that you could possibly do for them in these times of difficulty and uh, duress. Um, there will be many measures in place for different schools and we will, we will attack this in, in different ways. As my colleagues have said, there is a certain amount of uncertainty uh, uh, coming out from the World Health Organization who require only one meter distance between people. The UK government who require two meters of distance between people. Uh, the New Zealand government that requires 1.5 meters between people. There is uncertainty, but there is one single certainty and that is that as educators in the United Kingdom, we absolutely will do the right thing for your children when they arrive with us. We will make sure that you're cared for, we'll make sure that we apply the rules that we have to apply by government regulation, and we will go further. We will ensure that your uh, children are safe and sound and educated. After all, that's why you're sending them to us. They are there for us to educate them and we will not miss the point. We will ensure that their academic education will continue so that they leave us uh, in good form uh, and ready to move on to the next phase of what they're doing. So I'm not going to go into any further detail about what uh, individual schools may do because we, as we've said, it will differ between many institutions uh, and their locations within the United Kingdom. If you're interested in uh, knowing a little bit more about Cardiff Six Home College, I would be delighted to tell you. Uh, I have many Nigerian students with me in the school, uh, and if you want to hear a little bit about uh, our unashamedly excellent, um, our unashamed uh, emphasis on excellence, please do come and have a chat with me. Uh, we uh, will absolutely aim to uh, push our students and lead our students into uh, a wonderful academic uh, education whilst living in the safest and most secure boarding environment we can possibly have. Thank you very much for listening to me today. If you want to ask any questions of me in the, uh, in the session afterwards, in the Q&A, delighted to answer them. Uh, if not, may I wish you the very best of luck in your decision making in sending young people to schools in the United Kingdom. Uh, and uh, again, to emphasise that this is the safest decision you could possibly make at, at this uh, moment in time. I'm going to leave you with one thought. There's no such thing as a bad school in the United Kingdom. What there is, is a bad choice. Make sure that you know your children, make sure you know the school, make sure you understand the fit between the school and child. And if you get that right, as parents, we've all done the best we possibly can for our children. And again, you can rest assured that the school, once you've chosen it, will be doing exactly the right thing that they can do for, uh, to make sure your children have the best of educations. Thank you very much. And I hand back to Anne-Marie. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation, Gareth. Uh, so on behalf of the Newbie Education team, I would like to thank all of our panelists 
for your in-depth and informative presentations. It's obvious that uh, in spite of this global crisis, you have uh, all your schools have adapted positively to the changes imposed by COVID, and you have rigorous processes in place to ensure uh, quality education for students and to ensure their health, happiness, and well-being. Um, so I'm just going to uh, see if our executive director, Mrs. Omonobi, um, has anything uh, that she would like to add before we move on to the panel discussion. Well, I've heard all I want to hear today because um, our parents have been very worried about the, the measures that the schools have in place. And I'm sure they are hearing them and they are uh, I'm sure they've answered some of the pressing questions that they have. Uh, I like the bit that every one of you is using the word safety because in Nigeria, our parents are very protective and that is the word they want to hear. They want to know that their, their children are secured and safe wherever they are. And thank you. Let's listen to the parents and the, the questions they have and um, move on from there. Okay, uh, so <laughs> I'd like to announce to our parents and students that the floor is now yours. Uh, so um, do we have any questions for our panelists, please? So I've been informed that uh, no questions have been put in the chat box. There is <laughs> but, a question um, that uh, is been pressing on that because um, the WIAC is being postponed. We don't know when WIAC is, when they're going to write the WIAC exams. And uh, IGCSE, I don't know when they're writing the exams. So we want to know how these schools are going to um, to look at the entry requirements of these students, of the pupils for September. What are we doing? Are we working with their predicted grades? Um, we're, we're still uh, invigilating, invigilating exams via entrance exams via Teams and doing Skype interviews. So yes, we're, we're, we're obviously interested in the results that students will be given at GCSE for A-level, but um, entry to the school is still via entrance exams and uh, that hasn't changed. And we're actively invigilating every day for uh, places for this September and 2021. So, so we're, we're taking a similar approach as well. We're still doing our... Um we're still doing Skype interviews and we're still doing entrance testing. Um, one, one caveat is that our students can now take the entrance tests at home, um, obviously under exam conditions. And, and then when they get to the school, should we feel it's necessary that there may be, we may require more testing for the student just to make sure that their English level is what they say it is. And, and everything is sort of accurate, if you like. But we, we, we've got the same approach. Entrance testing and, and Skypes are still continuing. Yes, just to echo um, what Diane and Tom have both said, we're, we're doing exactly the same. We are still facilitating um, our normal entrance papers. Uh, students can do those at home. Uh, we invigilate them via Skype. Um, and and our assen essentially, I think we're all committed to the fact that no student should be prevented from joining our schools in September because of the current situation. And we're all working really flexibly. We're all doing um, any, everything we can. And I say, I think we're all absolutely committed to the fact that no student should be disadvantaged by the current situation and be prevented from joining us in September. Okay, are we sure that we, are, we have face-to-face -face in September or we are still thinking about uh, online in September uh, because parents are asking questions that if it's going to be online in September, it's going to be in this, is it going to be the same curriculum as face-to-face? -face? Um, is it uh, going to be interactive or is it going to be recorded? And for practicals, how are they going to, how are you going to handle the practical um, online? So those are the questions that they, they have been asking us. 
If, if I may, if I may start here, sorry. Um, I, I think I just uh, have mentioned that there is no definite answer for this. It's not black and white. It's, uh, uh, we, we all um, uh, are trying to, to see what the UK government say is deciding, first of all. And secondly, are these students will be allowed to travel from their own country or not? Is it going to be um, safe for them to, to, to travel or not? Uh, from Bellarby's approach, uh, um, we plan to go online with the, uh, in mind that it's going to be a blended course where students will be allowed to travel and carry on their study in January. Uh, if things change in the next couple of weeks, uh, we might be able to consider students to travel for face-to-face, -face, absolutely. Uh, Queen Nethelberg, as we are planning to open in September as normal, um, so we're hoping that we're in a situation where um, students can get to the UK safely and then obviously we have all our, um, you know, we have our policies in place so when students arrive, um, certainly at the moment with a 14 day quarantine period, um, that we, we, are off, we are thinking of offering um, that possibility um, at the school itself as well. Um, so they don't just have to go and say, good, stay with guardians or with family members for, for 14 days before they can enter the school. So. We, we, we're hopefully going to be able to provide that environment um, at the school itself. But um, obviously there is the, the backup plan of, of going online um, should, should we need to for the first term. And also we are offering January starts as well. So um, some students are deferring to a January start date. Um, but we're trying to encourage everybody to join in September so we can get those face-to-face, -face cl that classroom experience in. Um, students obviously being with their friends and their peers, um, it's, it, you know, being with other people is a good learning environment. So we'd like to get back to that and back to normal as soon as we can. Um, but but um, we, we are planning the, the online thing as a backup should, should we not, students not be able to come in September as normal. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, you know, because I've, I've, um, I've been getting some questions and that is what, what um, prompted us to start this session. You know, this pandemic has come with a a lot of uncertainties and worries for parents. Uh, so they've been asking questions, some questions we couldn't answer. And then we, de we decided to have this forum for all the stakeholders to be able to understand what one is doing. And another question that is coming up is that some of these schools uh, started online for those, for the existing students. The, the students that have been with you, many of them are online now, and some have refunded money for, for boarding um, facilities. So the question they're asking is, supposing the ones that their visas will expire um, after the a-levels, some of them, their visas are expiring in September and they are in the UK before the, the visas expire while they are still in the UK. I'll take this one, Rose. I'll, t I'll take this one, that's fine. Uh, Rose, I, I think that uh, with regard to the uh, UKVI and, and the visa situation, uh, again, there isn't a full clarity of the picture here and we're in a dynamic situation. So things may change going forward. But at this point in time, the UK ha VI have issued some quite clear guidance for, for tier four students at the moment, in that if you are uh, stranded, in the United Kingdom at the moment and can't home on a tier four visa, you will not be punished and you will not be uh, disadvantaged by having your visa expire. Uh, but the moment that uh, conditions are lifted and you're able to return to your own country, then, then that can happen. Uh, in terms of applying for visas at the moment, we've just noticed the start of a relaxation of rules around the, United, around the world uh, for visa centers. Uh, I think some of the first ones have just opened. There are four in China, Ukraine, etc. So they're, they're just starting to reopen. Now that doesn't mean business is normal because of course they have a huge backlog. All of this work that they would have been doing uh, from the, the 1st of June uh, onwards or even in May onwards uh, now has to be made up and all of these university students that uh, will be looking for, for, for visas as well they will be clogging up the system too uh, and therefore there needs to be a, a degree of patience and a degree of understanding uh, within the, the, the parent body and within the student body uh, that, that things may be a little bit slower than normal 
but the UKVI is putting a lot of uh, energy and a lot of effort into making sure that visas will arrive as and when they possibly can. The little details and the rules about course start date and what to do if, if you're going to be late or delayed because of COVID-19. There are rules in existence within the UKVI to make sure that as a student or as a parent, as a family, as a school, we are not disadvantaged by this process. So uh, the UKVI, not normally known for its uh, tolerance and understanding, has actually come out uh, fairly strongly and done quite well in this situation, uh, given that they don't know what's going to happen. Uh, they have actually said we have flexibility within reason. Uh, and we have understanding within reason. So uh, I would I would be uh, not too panicked and not too worried about the visa situation. It may be delayed, it may be slightly set back, but it will happen. And there is a, there is a positive move within the UKVI to ensure that students can come to the UK and study uh, appropriately for, for their schooling or, or for uh, their, their uh, degree at university as well. So uh, again, the likelihood of parents getting an absolute definitive answer to their questions is quite low at the moment. We're in, uh, we're in June and start date for schools is in September uh, and for universities uh, maybe a little bit later. Um, so we've got plenty of time, we've got well, plenty of time, we have time for water to go under the bridge between now and then and things will change. There, it's a dynamic situation. So please don't, don't worry or panic uh, about uh, not getting the exact answer you need right now. My message would be have faith. Yeah? This system has lasted for a long time and we will weather the storm. And if with patience, tolerance and understanding, we will all get to, to where we want to get to. Think of uh, Tom's statement there about uh, opening schools in, in September. Uh, absolutely. I think every single one of us here uh, has mentioned September is our start date. We are planning to start our normal school year. And, and whether we're offering a, a full face-to-face, -face, a full online, or a blended system uh, will be down to the, the rules in, in place at that particular time for us to respond to. But each and every school will have their own particular way of responding, and they will do the best they can for their students at that particular time. I have a question here, Rose, which has come on the, the private chat, which I checked with Anne-Marie, and she's uh, okay with me to, to, to answer privately, because I think it, it has an impact here. I talked about boarding houses being uh, single households, uh, and for the DfE in England, that is absolutely right. In Wales, we're in a little bit of a different situation in that uh, the Welsh Assembly Government makes the law on education in Wales. We're always a bit odd in Wales uh, and continue to be so. Uh, and they haven't actually made the same directive as the English government yet, but we hope that that will be the case. Uh, but in kind of six on college, we are in a very uh, luxurious and unfortunate situation in that every single one of our rooms is a single ensuite bedroom in the boarding house. And therefore we are able uh, for our, our students to come in and effectively be in a period of self-isolation uh, within our boarding houses anyway. And so we absolutely will start in September and our students can arrive with us uh, and uh, safely uh, be living with us and they will have either their online education within their bedrooms or uh, hopefully they will be in face to face. We're working on a system here in Wales. They've talked about having one third of your school in at any one point from June the 29th onwards. Uh, we, can, we can cope with 50% uh, of our school being in. So 50% of our school, if we have to social distance at two meters, will be in the classrooms having face-to-face -face education. And the other 50% will be in the boarding house receiving online education in real time. Uh, all, we're, we're all, all with webcam and real delivery by the teacher, all with interactive access on their computers in, in their bedrooms. Uh, and we will swap that 50% over every week to ensure that everybody has a, a, an equal share of face-to-face, -face, an equal share of uh, online blended learning. But I want to just emphasize one small point here. Um, I think we're a little too apologetic for our online learning. I think some of the things that I've seen coming out of independent schools since March the 20th has been absolutely unbelievable. There is some fantastic evidence of wonderful education uh, being delivered online. There are some things that we've done that I've looked at and, and, and seen our teachers and thought, wow, we're not going back to the old way. I am loving the way we're doing that. Um, and so we've learned some fantastic things about it. So I don't think we need to be as apologetic about online learning as, as, uh, uh, as, as we are being. I think that if we ever went to a fully online system, losing all face-to-face, -face, yes, I think that would be a disaster uh, because face-to-face uh, -face is important. 
But we could, we've learned some things about education in these last few months that perhaps we can look back and say, do you know, it was an opportunity, not a cost here. We've learned to make things better. And I think we'll be able to carry through each school here. We'll have little things they'll look at and say, do you know, I like that idea. We're going to do that come September when we're back full time. And I think that we will all see that and all, all have le learning and growth points. Um, I would say that during our online learning since March, we've covered more material in a shorter time. And our students in our feedback surveys we've had feel that they've actually understood uh, as much, if not more, because they seem to be more focused on a single point of contact on a screen uh, than they were in the classroom when they were disturbed or dis by, by other uh, other things around them. So I mean, that's a, that's a fantastic uh, sort of um, uh, a testimony, if you like, for, from, from our students. The other thing that, um, that I have here uh, I've been asked about is online fatigue for young people. And uh, we did a survey in the school here talking about online fatigue with our students and, and pretty much unanimously from our students came back the question, online fatigue? What's that? There are generations that have grown up with screens. My daughter here is in year 12. She's an AS student. She's downstairs doing her work, doing her lessons in real time online through Microsoft Teams. When she has a break, do you know what she does? She goes on YouTube on our phone or Instagram and messages her friends. She does a TikTok. Yeah? Our children, our students, whether we like it or not, have grown up with a, a, with a system of working with screens. Yeah? Uh, and they are incredibly adept at balancing their time. And actually, if we can uh, help them to balance that, the online fatigue for them is something that is, that is totally manageable and probably non-existent. It is not the same for our teachers, however. Our poor teachers who did not grow up through this era probably have a harder time with online fatigue. And, uh, and as managers within schools, our job to, uh, to ration, ration the amount of teaching our teachers do online is extremely important. I'm going to shut up now because I can talk forever and ever on, on, on these sorts of things. And I'm going to let somebody else get in the road. Thank you. I think Rose, I, I just wondered if I might um, add, Rose, um, in terms of uh, the situation in the UK, uh, we're a school, we have children from 2 to 18, so um, we actually already have pupils that are back in school, so all of our two-year-olds, all of our three-year-olds, all of our four-year-olds, um, and their three-year groups from four, from the ages of four to 11, are already back in school, um, and that's been fantastic. Um, it's fantastic to see children back back in school um, and it's fantastic to see a school uh, operating and feeling starting to feel like a school again but I think what it's done is it's given us um, a good deal of optimism for what can be achieved actually in September we've done huge amounts of work in order to prepare for these younger children coming in we've put new systems in place we've put new procedures in place we've talked to the children about the new rules that they need to follow and a two-year-old and social distancing doesn't necessarily come easy um, but we've done a lot of that work um, and I think a lot of other schools have done a lot of that work and I think that having gone through that it's helped to uh, secure in our minds that actually um, we will be ready for September and we will be able to make it work in September it won't be exactly the same as it has been before but it will work um, and uh, it will be it will be possible um, and like Gareth said you know it, there might be some sort of mix it might I think we you know it won't look exactly the same but I think we are feeling really positive having gone through the experiences that we've gone through over the last few weeks with the younger children um, that actually uh, uh, it, it, it is possible um, and we will make it work and the children in there at the moment are having a great time they're so pleased to be back in school um, and uh, and the teachers are so pleased to be back in school with them as well so I think it really does give us hope that the situation is improving um, the schools are getting ready the work that we're doing now will really put us in good stead for September. Hey, Anne Marie, can you hear us? Anne Marie? <laughs> and we lost our coordinates. And <laughs> 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 we lost our coordinator. I see back. Zach, Zach, can you remove your screen, please? Uh, I tried. I, I thought I did already. Um, 
So we okay. can uh, see your Windows uh, desktop okay. screen. <laughs> okay. The blue background. Yeah. Okay, our moderator is back. Okay. <laughs> Oh, could you? Oh, could you not hear me earlier? Oh, we're no. looking for you. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, so, thank you so much, uh, Gareth and Sarah, uh, for your input. Um, so, I just like to ask, uh, you know, our parents uh, if they have any additional questions that they would like answered if uh, they still require further clarification on what our panelists have presented. Um, you know, this is the time to please speak up. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> Anne Marie, if you can if you can stop my screen sharing, you, you, you do yourself. I couldn't figure it out, sorry. Mm. <laughs> I'm not so sure how to work it out, to be honest, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> uh, so it seems that we still don't have any questions. Sorry, Zach. But if you can share your own screen, maybe that, that would take away mine. Mm. I think we'll just leave it. <laughs> I'm not very techy. And we're, so. we're, we're closing okay. now anyway. Um, yes. Uh, do okay, I... so, yes, please, Matt, please go ahead. So, well, I am sure that we all enjoyed ourselves today. I learned so much today, I must be honest. Um, the session is very informative. And I just want to say a big thank you to everybody that have taken time out to come today. Pleasure. I thank you. I know it is not easy to pull the body schools out of their comfort zone. So I'm so, so, so <laughs> happy for all the principal, the headmasters, the directors that took time to come and talk to our parents today. We are very grateful. We are happy. Thank you so much. And thank you for our esteemed parents who have signed into this um, program. I hope you had all your questions answered. I must say a big thank you to our bankers, FCMB, for their usual support and promotion. We have, had, we have a capacity of 200 for this session and we are oversubscribed, and that is for FCMB's uh, promotion. So we just say a big thank you to FCMB. And uh, we don't forget to say thank you to Nubi team uh, that have worked tirelessly to make this happen, and Marie and her team, and then our IT uh, guru, Tokumbo. So we say a big thank you. Together, we shall succeed in helping our children to choose the right schools. Just to inform you that Nubi can arrange a virtual uh, meeting with our partners. So if you want us to arrange a meeting with our partners, we'll be happy to do that for you. We know that that helps. Apart from this, you know, one-on-one -on -one is very important. So we are happy to do that. I'm happy to, for you to send in your applications now that you know that UK is safe for you to go. So thank you very much. Well done, Anne-Marie. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> thank you very much, Anne-Marie. Thank you very much, Rose. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you very much, Rose and Anne-Marie. I just want to say thank you to my colleagues as well from the other schools. Nice to e-meeting you. And hopefully yeah, nice to see you all. Yeah. To basically Nigeria or somewhere else. And uh, uh, it was a pleasure for me to participate in this. So thank you very, very yeah, much. Thank you, Zach. <laughs> thank thank you, you so much, everybody. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Bye. 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 <laughs>